All right, welcome to topic three, refraction. This is the second of the three topics in optics. Okay, so again, like the previous video, very short. Uh, the notes, there are only, well, there are 11 pages, but only 10 are really necessary. Um, I'll go through them quick enough. All right, so what is refraction? Refraction is the bending of a wave as it passes from one medium to another of a different refractive index. Okay, now for this in the exam, okay, what they will expect from you is the, all right, the following. Bending of a wave, passes from one medium to another, three marks. Different refractive indexes, three marks. Okay, so that's going to be the breakdown there. All right. So you've all probably done this experiment where you have the ray box and it shines into the block. And if you draw your normal line here, that is your incident and that is your refracted. Okay, that's the idea there. And then as well, when you're coming out of the block, you draw your line here. Okay, that is your incident that is your refracted okay all right so and of course if you hit a parallel it goes go straight through all right uh, there you have it here that's kind of just basically explaining it that now for this not really gets asked but it's nice to know when light travels from a rare to a dense it goes towards the normal so when you go from a rare medium to a dense medium the ray of light goes towards the normal and Newton's second or Newton's law, every action has an equal but opposite reaction. Okay, therefore, if it goes from the denser to a rare, it goes away from the normal. Every action equal but opposite. Okay, so if it goes from rare to dense, it goes towards. When it goes dense to rare, it goes away. All right. Um, the laws of reflect refraction. Okay, and as you can see here, guys, um, the incident ray here is the same as the incident ray at the end, or the the refracted ray coming out here. So technically. That diagram is a little bit incorrect. So technically, that should be R, that should be I. And we're just saying here that this equals this and this equals this. Okay? All right. Now, the laws of refraction, you need to know the two of these, especially the second one. The laws of refraction are the incident, the normal, and the refracted ray all lie in the same plane. Okay? Pretty similar, okay? The incident, the normal, and the refracted. The only difference is the last one, the reflected ray. Now we say the refracted ray. The second, which is Snell's law, the sine of the angle of incidence is proportional to the sine of the angle of refraction for a given pair of media. Now, that is also known as Snell's law. However, you don't need to state that. You can give this. You can give the equation, but then, of course, state all of this, okay? Yeah, and N being the refractive index. Okay. All right, so you can state that. That's Snell's law. You can give that as Snell's law and you will get full marks, okay? All right. Um, I don't worry about that too much. No difference against the refractive index between two media. Right. Now, down here, this is kind of the key for answering these kind of questions. So the work of refractive index, if the refractive index of glass is 1.5, it means when light travels from the air to the glass, the refractive index is 1.5. This is, can be written as A then G, air to glass, okay? If you go the other direction, if you're going from the dense, okay, to rare, then it becomes one over N equals sine I over, oops, that's getting cut off, sine R, okay? So when you go the opposite way, when you're going from a rare to a dense, it's N equals sine I over sine R, and when you go the other way, it goes around the other way. Why? Because up here, you see, the other way, when you're going from the dense, this is the dense, this is the rare, okay? This and this are different, okay? So basically, your angle of incident this time is technically the same as the angle of refraction. So you therefore just make correct, you just put a one over in, okay? That's all you do, all right? Okay, so let's have a look at these questions. Question one, a ray of light enters glass from the air, the angle of incidence, so I, equals 25, the refractive index, N, 16.4, and they look for R, N, sine I, sine R, I want to find R, so therefore, sine R, sine I over N, R equals sine inverse, sine I over N. Sub in all your values, so R equals 1.5, and that's it, okay? Fairly straightforward. Uh, number two, 
the refractive index of a diamond, so again, N2.42, uh, a ray of light passing from the inside, okay, so we're going from the denser to the air, so we're going from the dense to the less dense, makes an angle of incidence of 20 degrees, find R, so 1 over N, sine I, sine R, okay, and we're looking for R again, so that'll become R equals the sine inverse of N times sine I. And you should get your R value here to work out to be uh, 55.9. Okay. All right, so that's that. Uh, the next thing here is refractive index, real depth, apparent depth, okay? So when you're working this out, I don't think this is in the log tables. Uh, might be, I can't remember it off the top of my head. So refractive index, right? So when you're basically standing on the side of a pool, that's why they say don't jump into water that you haven't been to before. The reason being is that it's not actually the depth you think it is. Always wade yourself in to figure out what the depth is because the ground will appear higher up than it actually is. Okay, so it could actually be an incredibly deep pool, okay? Or else you might actually be jumping into something that's very shallow. So the depth is hard to understand when it comes to water, okay? And here's why, okay? When you look perpendicularly down, you get the most accurate result. But when you're standing at the side of the pool, you get a less accurate result, etc. okay? So your equation is, refractive index is the real divided by the apparent. So the real depth divided by the apparent depth. Real divided by apparent, okay? That's how you find the refractive index. Real divided by the apparent, okay? All right, so we'll have a look at these two questions now. A regular glass block of dimensions five by five by six, okay, is viewed perpendicularly from one side and it appears to be a cube. So if it's a cube, that means all sides are the same. So it'd be five by five by five, wouldn't it? Okay, so therefore, we're gonna imagine that the block is five, five, six, okay? So therefore, we will say the real depth is six centimeters. The apparent depth is, of course, five centimeters. So N is going to be six over five, real over apparent. And my real depth, or my fractive index is 1.2. There you go, okay? So cube is five by five by five, so the real depth is actually six, but the apparent depth is five. Okay, and that's how you solve it. Number two, a glass block of refractive index 1.5 N is placed on top of a mark on a sheet of paper. When the mark is viewed perpendicularly through the glass, a virtual limit of an image of it appears 33.33 cm. So we have a glass block and it's on a sheet of paper. Okay, that is the real depth. Now we see an image here. That is the apparent depth, that is 3.33 centimeters from the bottom, okay? So that's what we see, okay? So what I'm gonna say is I'm gonna say the real depth is gonna be X, you could call it Q, Y, or Z, it doesn't really matter, and the apparent depth, so if X is the real depth, what's the apparent depth? That'd be X minus 3.33, wouldn't it? Because it's 3.33 centimeters above. So therefore, N equals real depth divided by apparent depth, so 1.5 equals x over x minus 1.33. So we bring that up and we will get x minus 1.33 times 1.5 equals x. So it's going to be 1.5x minus, what did I work? I left that as 1.33 just because it got messy and I didn't want to deal with it. Equals x. So bring this back up here. Bring my x's to one side, my others to the other. So 1.5x minus x equals 1.33 times 1.5. So that becomes 0.5x equals 1.33, 1.5x equals 1.33, 1.5 all over 0.5. So my x value should work out to be 9.99. Centimeters. So the real depth of the block is 9.99 centimeters. Okay?
there you go fairly straightforward guys um none of this is really overly complicated it's actually one of the easier topics in in, in physics really it's why it usually only comes up as a question 12. okay uh relative speeds okay so when an object passes from one medium to another its speed and direction changes but we're going to worry about the speed okay so you will have this equation in your log tables, n equals c1 divided by c2, okay? c1 is the air, c2 is the object, okay? So air divided by object. So think of real depth, apparent depth, okay? So real divided by apparent, okay? So let's imagine that the speed of light in air is its actual speed, and the speed of light in the object is the apparent speed, if you will. That's a, one way. It's not really correct, but it's a, it's a way to help you try and remember which is on the top, okay? And that's all this is about, trying to help you to remember, okay? But always remember, it's air divided by object. Air divided by object, okay? Real divided by the new one, the modified one, okay? When it slows down, okay? Okay, so what is the refractive index of a medium in which light travels at a, sp light travels at a speed of... What is the refractive index of, of a medium? Oh, so I got it. All right, I thought they were giving me that as a speed of light. I misread it, in which light travels at that speed, okay? So that is C2 equals 1.25 by 10 to the 8 meters per second minus 1. C1 is, of course, the speed of light. And we're just finding N. So N is C1 over C2, 2.4. So the refractive index is 2.4, and that's it. That's it. That's it. All those questions are kind of the same. Just remember, once you remember which is the object, um, C2, it's, it's air divided by object every time. Okay, that'll help you solve it every time. Okay, so <clears throat> total internal reflection and critical angle. Let me see now. So that's the last thing I think we will be looking at. Yep, okay, so it's the last thing really that's going to be added, okay, to um, refraction, okay. So basically that... When you have light escaping from a dense to a, <clears throat> a dense to a less dense object, okay, eventually you will get to an angle where the light is no longer able to escape. Because as we said, if you go from a dense to a less dense, the object reflects away, refracts, not reflects, refracts away from the normal. Okay? Eventually you will get to a point where it creates a 90 degree angle. In other words, the light travels along the edge, and then it will start to go back into the block. Okay? So eventually it will get to the point where the, it will no longer be able to escape the block and get bounced back in. That is total internal reflection, okay? The definition of which, when the angle of incidence in the dental medium exceeds the critical angle, light is reflected back, okay? That's what happens. So your new equation, it's the equation you also see in your log tables, n is equal to one over sine c, okay? So the refractive index one over sine c, why is that? Because, as I said up here, why is it one over sine c? Because the angle of incidence is of course 90 degrees and the angle of refraction is sine c okay so again if we look at it, we're going from okay if we're going from the dense to the less dense okay so a lot of people get confused with this because they say well how could this actually possibly possibly be so another way to look at it is this all right n equals one over oh, n equals sine i over sine r okay so if this is the critical angle Okay, so that means n is equal to, oh, sorry, no, we're going the other way around. Yeah, so it's one over n, apologies. Yeah, so we're going inverted, one over n, you see? So what you're going to get is we need to have n, so you're going to end up with r being 90 degrees, so one over n equals sine c over one, and then you invert, which gives us n equals one over sine c, okay? So, because r 90. All right, that's what's happening. One over n equals sine i over sine r. R is, of course, going to be 90 degrees. So therefore, it's one over sine c. And that's it. That's what happens. That's how you get your refractive index. Okay? That's where we end up with that equation, one over sine c. I need to update my notes. I made a mistake there. Um, that in my notes is actually meant to be uh, the other way around. Uh, it was a typo. Okay? There was another step before that where it's one over n, and then I inverted it around the other way. But don't worry about it. Okay? I... I need to make a mental note to actually change that. Okay, I'm uh, using a prism to turn a ray of light 90 degrees. <clears throat> You're very straightforward, you should know that. You hit the 45 degree angle, it bounces down, you hit to two and it comes back out. All right, here we go. So the critical angle for a certain medium is, so C equals four. Now usually these questions are going to be um, <clears throat> solved for a pool. I'll, actually, I'll go through it at the end of this actually. Uh, so N equals one over 
sine c. Always state your equation first, guys. I said it before. Well, n equals 1.56. Problem 7. What is the apparent depth of an object in a block whose material is a critical angle? The object is viewed perpendicular from the air, and its real depth 12. Okay, so n equals 1 over sine c. You should get your n value to be 1.56. Now, what do they want to look at the object view? What is the parent depth? So we're looking for AD. Okay, so therefore n is equal to real over apparent. Okay, so we're looking for apparent. So apparent is equal to real over n, which is equal to 12 over 1.56. So the apparent depth is going to be 7.69 centimeters. There you go. Okay, that's it. Now, I'm going to rub this out because I want to go through something. Usually, the exam paper questions on this one, there's a few questions in the real world physics books. Um, but if you go back through the past, ooh, the past exam paper questions, that will solve them for you as well. Okay, it's the idea of this, it's always the same thing. There is a pool or a lake, and there's a lamp on the bottom, um, and the lamp is making a dish, uh, disc. And it's going to be either what's the radius of the disc, or it's going to be what. The, is the critical angle or something like that. They'll always give you the depth of the pool. Now, what I say to you in this is draw it out. They make it a lot easier if they don't give it to you. All right, look at this. What do we have? We have a right angle triangle. Pull that out. Pull out your right angle triangle, okay, where that is your depth. That is your radius. You have your right angle here, okay? And that's, of course, your critical angle, okay? So this let me see the radius is there. So that's your critical angle C. All right? So you can solve and get the critical angle by doing this. Okay? And so forth. And that's it. All right? So that's always what I say is you pull it out to the triangle. And then depending on the information they give you, you solve it from there. And that's all you ever do. Draw it out, create your triangle, pull the triangle out, and solve. Generally the same thing over and over. All right? So it's fairly straightforward once you get a bit of practice in it. Okay? All right. The last thing here, guys, is the optic fibers. Generally, if they ask you the function of an optic fiber, they haven't asked it for a while. They used to ask quite a bit, um, especially because fiber optics became a big thing. Now, they're technology-wise, they're still good for broadband, but now that we're moving on to 5G pretty soon, um, I think, personally, I think op fiber optics are going to be obsolete. I think we've, there's better technologies coming out. There's no point spending millions putting down fiber optics when we could get it um, mobily, you know, um, with 5G. So, um, and regardless of what conspiracy theorists tell you, 5Gs do not cause all those things that they tell you it causes. So if they ask you what exactly is a fiber optic, it is a very thin transparent rod in which light can travel by total internal reflection, okay? So you will be asked to draw it and describe it. Your diagram is simply this very simple diagram, okay? Cladding one, cladding two, and the light bouncing along on the inside, okay? So what is it? It is glass pipe coated with a second material of lower refractive index, okay? Hence N2 is less than N1. When it strikes the fiber, it strikes the boundaries at an angle greater than the critical angle. This is what they always look for. The key things is they want greater than the critical angle. This causes total internal reflection. That two things they're gonna look for, you have to mention them, okay? This now causes the light to strike the opposite wall, gets reflected, and you're done. Okay, and that's it. So you have less refractive index on the outside. So every time the light hits the boundary, it's going to cause total internal reflection as the light moves along. Okay? What would happen if the second coating wasn't there? As a question was asked once, uh, the central core of the light would just pass through. It's a protective layer to stop it from getting scratched. And that's kind of it, really. They don't really ask much else there. You can have a look at the there. You can pause the video. Um, why are they better than electrical cables? This is why. Pick any two perfectly fine um and same here and that's that okay all right guys that's the end of topic three of optics and um, any questions leave them in the edmodo page or on the comment section below all the best